For this week, we're going to talk a little bit more about the select statement. We're going to look at different ways to select things, how to screen out certain rows, screen out certain columns. Just fill out a little bit more about a lot of the things we talked about last week. So over in SQL Management Studio, we want to start a new query. I will start off with this query to show you concatenation. We've talked about concatenation in our other languages. And in SQL, you can concatenate using the plus sign. So I'm going to do the first name, and I'm going to concatenate a space, and I'll do the last name, excuse me, plus last name. And we'll say, uh, also do this. Let me add in, put a dash. Actually, let's put some spaces on either side of the dash. And we'll do the salary as well. And that's from, excuse me, from the employees table. And I execute it and I get invalid object name employees. Oh no, what did I do wrong? This is one, one of the things I warned you about last week and I purposely wanted to do that this week. Um, well, first of all, I spelled employees wrong, didn't I? So that could be a problem if I spelled the name of the table wrong. But in this case, that's not it. Um, that's weird, I, I should have got an error message here. I want you to notice what I did. It's something I warned you about last week. I didn't make sure that I had the proper database selected up here. I had the master database selected, and I think when I was setting up the sample database for the class last week, there's a good chance in the master database I set up an employee table. I did. I set up a bunch of tables that should not be there. Um, I was running some scripts to generate those. So you won't have an employees table. I'm going to delete that out of there. Oh, it failed. I got a bunch of other things that depend on that. So I'll have to go through and get those cleaned out. So you will get the same error message if you do that, that I got when I spelled employees wrong, and that it can't find the object. Uh, when I spelled employees correctly, it did find the object in my master database. You won't have it in yours, so you will get this error down here. Invalid object name employees. And the reason was because I had the master database selected instead of the one I wanted to work in, which is our sample database. So I want to select sample DB and hit execute. And I still got an error. Error converting type of our char to numeric. Our salary, so this is something we should point out that we can do in Java and we can do it in C Sharp. Um, our salary is a numeric data type, and these are strings we're working with here. We've concatenated a bunch of strings together. Um, so let's do it a different way. Let's do comma salary, and we'll execute it. And here we go. We have Stephen King, and it was concatenated with a space between the first name and the last name. And then the second column, we, we had salary. All right. Now, we didn't put any heading above the first name and last name. Since it, was a, uh, since it was an expression, it just used no column name because it wasn't officially a column in the database. But if we want to reassign it, we could do um, full name. Remember, I can use as here, or I can leave the as out. So we'll call that column full name in this case. So now we have a full name heading over here, and then the salary. And if I want salary to be capitalized, I can even rename it with the same name, but a capitalized version. There we go, full name and salary for all of our employees. All right, let's look at another one. Let's look at, let's look at the departments that are here. So let's look at department. Notice we're getting autocomplete now because we have a valid table 
in a valid database. So we're going to select a department ID from the employees. And I will execute this. And you can see here all the different employees belong to uh, Department 10, Department 20, there's another Department 20, there's a 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 for all the employees, each of the individual employees in Department 50. That's not always what we want. If we want to see the list of departments that employees belong to, we may not want to see all the repeats. So if we want to fix that, we can use the distinct keyword. So right here before Department ID, I will put distinct. Select the distinct department ID, and that will suppress all these repeats. It'll only show us each department one time. So there we see it. We have employees in department 10, 20, 50, 60, 80, 90, and 110. All right, so the distinct keyword, we use that to eliminate duplicates. Always to eliminate duplicates. All right, so let's talk about limiting our rows. And we briefly touched on the where, where clause last week. So let me pull up, I'm just gonna pull up some template code, All right? So this is what we know pretty much about a select statement so far. And this is what we would get, need to get used to reading in our documentation. So a select statement is the keyword select followed by a star, we, we learned how to use the asterisk last week if we want to select all the columns. The pipe here means or. And then optionally, we could use the word keyword distinct. We just saw that in the last example. Followed by a column. Or, so we have a star, and we can do distinct, distinct as an option. It's, it's in square brackets, so it's optional. So we can say select asterisk or we can say select and we can give column names, or we can use an expression of some kind. And we did that last week, we did some math. We used an expression in there with a column. Okay. From the table, whatever table we specify, where some condition is met. Notice where condition is in square brackets. It's optional, we don't have to have a where clause. We just did some queries without a where clause. So always know that things that are in square brackets are optional. If you see a pipe, it's separating different possibilities that you could use to follow a statement. And if we look at the full API for the select statement, um, you would see there's way more options than this. These are the options we know about so far. So let's actually run a statement using this as a template. So a select clause. We'll do select, and in this case, we'll specify employee ID, and I spelled employee wrong again. And remember that when we do this with video, I'm typing slow here, right? Employee ID, that gives you a chance to keep up, but if I ever go more quickly, or you need to read do something, you can always hit the rewind button, you can always use the pause button. Employee ID, last name, and we'll get the department ID too. From, my enter key is sticking. I have to get my keyboard cleaned. From, we'll go from the employees table. I'm going to run this. Let's go ahead and run this statement. Notice I'm highlighting this one. If I try to run all this, this template up here, this template code that we're looking at, uh, probably won't run correctly. Uh, but this will, and if I highlight it, it will only execute what I have highlighted. So there we, go. there we go. We got employee ID, last name, and department ID from the employees table. But we want to limit that. Let's limit it. I just want to see the employees who are in department 90. So I go to my where clause and I add it in. Where department ID. I'm going to I'm going to do it lowercase type it. equals 
um, 90. And remember, we should be using semicolons at the end. It'll work now. It won't always work as people start enforcing that rule in their, in their products. All right, select employee ID, last name, department ID from employees, where the department ID equals 90. I'll highlight that and execute it. And now it only shows me those employees who work in department 90. We're gonna see the same columns we had picked, employee ID, last name, department ID. Remember that when we narrow down the columns, we're asking the database management system to do projection. It's limiting the columns. When we ask it to narrow down the rows, which is what we just did, we narrowed it down to three rows by using a condition in the WHERE clause, that is selection. Those are the technical terms for that. All right, let me get rid of the sample up there for a minute. So this can be, um, the comparisons can, here can be any kind of Boolean expression. Uh, we can say equal to, Notice, unlike Java and C Sharp and the other languages we've looked at, um, we can use a single equals. It doesn't have to be double equals. Let's do, uh, let's look at all the people who have a department greater than 90. See what happens there. All right, so these two people are in department 110. Notice 90 wasn't included here. If I want 90 to be included, I have to say greater than or equal to. And now we see department 90 and 110. I say less than or equal to. We should see a whole bunch of them now. Okay. There we go. Let's do, let's do get the first name and last name where Uh, last name equals Taylor. Execute it. And Jonathan Taylor was that person. Uh, we can get his department ID too if we want. Jonathan Taylor, department 80. What if we do Jonathan Taylor. Will it still find it? It's stored in the database with a capital T. We'll run it with a lowercase t and see what happens. Oops, I had it highlighted. I warned you about that. I accidentally had the T highlighted, so it just tried to run that as a statement, and it's not a full statement. So I'll click off of it. I'll hit execute. It still worked. So some database systems uh, are case sensitive. Oracle is one I can think of that is, is case sensitive by default. They run everything case sensitive. Uh, MySQL uh, in a Microsoft SQL, T-SQL uh, are not case sensitive, but I believe both of them have options where you can turn on so that, it, so that things are case sensitive. But by default, we haven't changed anything with that, and it worked both ways with a capital T or a lowercase t, so it is not case sensitive on these systems. All right, let's try let's try some other where clauses here. Let's do some higher dates. We haven't really worked with the date format yet. So we have over here in our tables. In our employees table columns, we have hire date. And notice its type is date time. Let's try, you know, when I didn't practice this one, when I ported this over from our other system that I used to use. So who knows what's going to happen? We'll do 01 January 2000. Who got hired? before the 1st of January in the year 2000. Ah, let's add in the higher date up here so we can actually look at them. That's something I want to point out too. Notice I was able to filter on the higher date, even though I didn't have the higher date column 
in my select clause. So you can filter on things that are not actually displayed. But just so we can see, I'm going to put higher date in here. And I'm going to hit execute. And we can see their higher dates, 1987, 89, all the way up through 1994. Did I have anybody that was hired after January of 2000 in here? I did. I had one person. It was hired on January 29th of 2000. So we can use these comparison operators with dates. Notice that dates are in this format. Day, dash, three-letter month, dash, year and we'll be looking at some other options on how to display those and how we can manipulate those to be a little bit more friendly but that's the default date for for SQL let's do let's do some salaries salary greater than for numbers we don't have to use quotes salary greater than six thousand there's all the people with salaries greater than 6,000. If I want to show the salary, I can do it up here. Notice that there's nobody in here with a salary of 6,000 exactly. But what if we put greater than or equal to? Now we do have some people. Bruce Ernst and Pat Fay both have salaries of exactly $6,000. I just want to see the people that have that. There we go. It said equal to 6,000. All right. Since we're working with salaries, what if I want to see a range of salaries? So we could do this. Where the, so Let's show me the people with salaries greater than or equal to $9,000 and where salary their salary is less than $11,000 so I have two conditions here joined with an and statement we've used and statements in other languages already um, this joins them this has to be true and this has to be true for the row to be included in our query And that shows me Alex Hunold has $9,000 and Eleni Zlatke has a salary of 10500 So this is showing me salaries between two values. Now, the nice part is there's a better way to do this. We can say we're salary between and we can say $9,000 and eleven thousand dollars so between and and notice what happened here we're seeing one more that we didn't see before because i had less than eleven thousand dollars so that tells us something about between and when we use that for a comparison this is better we don't have the conjunction um, it's easier to read only the people whose salaries are between $9,000 and $11,000. But this should tip you off that these two numbers, $9,000 and $11,000, are included in this statement. So it would be the same as saying greater than or equal to $9,000 and salary less than or equal to $11,000. But we can shorten it up and just say salary between those two numbers. Just remember that it includes those numbers. Neither one of them is exclusive. All right. How about if we want to pull, as long as we're on this, shortcuts for doing multiple things. Let's do, let's go to another table. Let's do a select statement. We're going to get the city. State underscore province and the country ID. From the locations table. Let's see what happens when we run that. Okay, there we go. We can see country IDs. We have several US's, 
We have a Canada and we have a United Kingdom. What if we wanted to pull out one of those? We could say where... Country ID equals uh, UK. And we only get the people who live in the United Kingdom. What if we wanted to add a country? We could say, and now we have to repeat country ID equals, we'll do Canada. Um, excuse me, or country ID equals Canada. Now we get Canadians and uh, United Kingdom. But this is kind of long. Remember, we, we've talked about this principle that we don't necessarily want to repeat things. I repeated country ID in here. There's an easier way, and I often call this the forgotten command because a lot of new people uh, to database, you teach them this, and then two weeks later, they're back to using something like this. And think about if we added a third one. We're adding on this much text. And a fourth one, we're adding that much text again. And a fifth one, we're adding that much text again. There's a much easier way. And that is the command uh, keyword in. We can say where the country ID is in, and inside parentheses, we can give it some values. CA, and we'll use UK. Okay. So it looks for any country ID that's in the list that you put inside the parentheses. Separate the values by commas. Okay. And it shows me Canadians and UK. Technically, we could use this with a single value if we wanted to. There's a single item in the list. Show me the ones that are in there. And it works. Uh, we can do, let's do Canada and US. And it just shows me the US and Canada. So in is very convenient. Now think about it. If we want to go to a third value in here, we're not adding a long string of text. All we're adding is one value. A lot uh, more compact than if we would have used a bunch of or, or, or conjunctions inside our where clause. All right, this is getting long, so I'm going to pause here, and I will see you in the next video.